Hello and welcome to Journeys and Journals. I'm Bernie Martin Beck and guess where we're going today? We're going to meet the First Nation people. We're going to talk about our history before there was a United States. And I want you to meet my guest. It's Willie. Willie Whitefeather. Willie Whitefeather. I don't mm. see any white feathers on you. Well, uh, well, I'm kind of chicken. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well. Uh, yeah. No, uh, Pluma Blanca. It's uh, my my mother's side of the family was from uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, and so bueno. my my aunt my aunt called me Pluma Blanca, so it kind of stuck. Blanca being white. White, white feather. Yeah, Pluma is feather. So la Pluma. And I also, I'm a writer, and I wrote, wrote a couple of books, you know. And uh, I think that uh, the main thing is I try to help kids uh, to survive and uh, raise the self-esteem. Willie, we went online, and we looked at your work, and uh -huh. we looked at the kids' books, so we looked at a lot of things about you that uh -huh. are just available on, on uh, search on a computer. But... Um, I'm very interested. Let's start with turtles. Why with turtle? turtles? Well, the turtle is, uh, you see, uh, the, my father's side of the family was uh, Cherokee, and my mother's side of the family was from uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina. And so if you picture in your mind, the head of the turtle is South America. Okay. The long neck is Central America. And the shoulders are Mexico. This is the leg that shakes. This is uh, Baja California and California. Over here is the leg of winds. That's Florida. In the northeast is the leg of ice. And they're getting record cold winter in the northeast, Maine and New Hampshire. The other one is Oregon, Washington, and around Alaska, and that's the Lake of Fire, Mount St. Helen, Mount Hood, Mount Lassen, and all the volcanoes. So the four corners, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, these are the four mountains. These are special to the Ute, Navajo, uh, Hopi, and uh, the uh, Zuni. Now, which and so the four mountains, and this is New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, and Utah. Now, which family, so, your family's from which one? From which? My, my father's side is from uh, our, our, the Cherokee side of the family, and my mother's side is from Argentina. So, so Cherokee. when you shake the turtle, that's the voice of the turtle. So every time the, the earth shakes, it brings people together. Otherwise, we don't do nothing. And so we have to listen to the turtle because you see, these are plates on the back of the turtle and the plates are moving and shifting and the great turtle is growing and she's going in a new direction. Turtle well, Island is on the great snow eagle. The snow eagle has snow on top of the head, the North Pole and the tail, the South Pole. And now the eagle goes in a new direction, and so we're all along for the ride. And okay. so she's teaching us to get along together. And that's part of the message that I love, 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 because sure. what are you teaching kids? That is so important. I have here books by you, and you go to, I talked to someone who said, oh, he comes to the prison. He comes to talk to the juveniles at, at the detention. Mm -hmm. Someone else said, oh, he comes and talks to the people in the park. And it's all about survival, mm -hmm. isn't it? The, That's the main thing. For kids. Yeah. What's this about? And it saved a couple of kids' lives. It was in the newspaper. And uh, this is my river book because I was a river guide. And so you can see I'm... I was, I was a class five guide. And so the people, they yell and scream and they holler and they yell, have you ever done this before? And I yell, no, I've never done this before. And they scream and holler and I scream and holler. And then I, I, I holler right side, back paddle, left side, forward paddle. And I take them through white water. And we go in circles <laughs> and they scream and holler. But when people come out of the river, 
It strengthens the human spirit. It makes you stronger in life. It helps you handle things. Well, you have a picture here that is the silliest thing I ever saw. Well, it's the river in life. So I wrote my river book. You see here? Here I was taking people down the river, and you notice they're all looking at the boulder. And the boulder is like the problem in life. And so I, a school teacher asked me to come to a school and tell the river story. Would you like to hear the river story? Yeah. Okay. Um, you have a, a guide on the river of life. You have a guide on the river of water. You get a good feeling between your shoulder blades. You go for it. You get a gut feeling, use caution. Some people say, follow me, I'm number one. Look out, because on the river, you throw your stick in, and you watch where the stick goes. You follow your stick, follow your heart. If some people are not true with you, then the boulder in life and the boulder on the river represents drugs, crack, cocaine, speed, wacky tobacco, and all the stuff people get stuck on. And they slam against that boulder, and the guide calls high side, high side, the river's pouring in, and your friends, family, relations might be caught on the boulder. And so the b boulder is the alcohol and all the drugs that people get stuck on. And they say, come on, take a drink of this, try a drink of that. And you go, no, man, I want to see what life's about. And on both sides of the big boulder are two big waves. And the waves are called fear. And so people are afraid. Don't be afraid. You face the fear. Go for it. Fear is F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real or free, every anxious reaction. Go for it. Knock down the wave. And you faced it. You did it. And a good river guide puts the strongest paddlers in the front of the boat. You keep your corner out of your eye. Your paddle hits the water at the same time so you don't go like a duck. And <laughs> then on the other side of the white water, the river's like glass. It's like a mirror. And your friends and family might be stuck over there on the boulder. So you feel sad. You look down. The river's like a mirror. It, it pictures your face the trees, the passing clouds. You made it, and you never look back when you go down the river of life. You know why? Because there's another boulder. And you've and got the to reason be you're born. Yes, the reason you're born is so you can grow old. And pretty soon it's like a dance. And so with knowledge, you get wisdom, and you get knowledge to go around the boulders. And then you go to the top of the wave. When you're all the way on the top, be a little sad. You know why? You're going down in the bottom. When you're all the way down, you'll be happy. You know why? Because you're going back up the top again. And you become a hill and gully rider. Eh? Now, the river forks. We always have a choice, left fork or right fork. So if you take the right fork, you jump ashore, you walk back upstream, and you help people who are just going down, going down the river. And while you're doing that, your problems are taken care of. Everything's a circle. So to tell you a quick story, I told that story at a school. The teacher asked me to come to her home about two months later because she received a letter from a boy that was in her class. And so um, she says, the boy mentions you in the letter, and uh, you told the li li river story. Well, anyway, to put a long story short, his mom didn't want him anymore. Ooh. She put him in a foster home, and the boy was, gonna do, was going to commit suicide. Oh, dear. And, and so that's the day that I went and told the river story. And the next day, a couple showed up with a boy and a girl, and they decided to adopt him, and he says, I remember what Willie said, never look back when you go down the river of life. He says, so I went with my new mom and dad. I want to tell you, I'm so happy. I think I get choked up, see? He says, I'm so happy with my new mom and dad, my new brother and sister, and they love me so much, I can't thank Willie enough for telling the river story. You never know who you affect. You are so right. That's this eight-year-old boy here. 
these are these are other kids that have survived because of your stories about rivers. Well, these are stories that uh, they use my uh, this book, my survival book. They've sold seventy-five thousand of this. It's gone into seven printing, and uh, and so the kids like to color in it. You know, do they color in that one? I don't know, but they Sh color it. Sure. So now, and I wrote it for six years old because the kids from one to six, they can survive better than any army or survival instructor because they have, they come into this world with a knowing. And if it gets cold, they crawl into a hollow log. A little kid can survive. Seven to 12 years old, they have a difficult time because then they start uh, uh, getting the fear of the grown-ups. And, and so uh, the reason I wrote this book is I know of 28 kids that went on the desert mountains and they died. Oh, dear. Mm. They didn't what prompted, know. prompted, always there's something to prompt you to write a book. Yeah. Never write for money, no. Write from your heart when you write a book. And don't use any big words because that way the people don't have to have, look at a dictionary while they're reading. And, and so make it simple. My friend Linda Runyon wrote the foreword for the book. And uh, Linda was in uh, Ripley's, Ripley's Believe It or Not. She fed, she fed uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, she fed uh, 200 families on 10 acres of wheat. And she's on the, the computer on uh, of the field, of the field .com. And she has a DVD, and I'm in it with her. I taught her desert, and I taught the army. I taught yeah, two ta battalions. Talk, talk to me a little bit about you and the army. Well, what I do is I, I take the fellas out in the desert, and I show them how to eat the wild food the cactus without poisoning themselves. If they get trapped behind enemy lines, they, uh, they're on their belly. They got food all around them. All they have to do is I show them the plant test so they don't poison themselves and they'll make it. The main thing is to save one of our boys' life, to save the, the soldier's life, you know? And, uh, and I made this, uh, and when it gets real cold, I made a little stove. This has uh, got toilet paper in it. It's got a cigarette lighter and matches. If the matches are wet, the lighter will work. If the lighter, the little wheel fell off, the matches will work. Always have backup in survival. And so what I do is uh, if you're trapped in a snowbound vehicle or you're, or you're cold, you take rubbing alcohol, 70 or 90% or alcohol. You pour about, about a quarter cup of alcohol on the toilet paper, you turn it upside down, it won't pour out. And then you can, I'll use the lighter, and you can light it, see? Now this and is... you can hold it in your hand, see, and it'll warm you up. If, and I carry this as a river guide in my dry bag, because people would fall out into the icy water, and they'd come out going, dee, 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 you know? And so I say, here, hold this, and they warm themselves up, because this is your hypothermia. And you've got to keep yourself warm. So if your hands are cold, see, you hold it in your hand. Then you, only this gets hot. Ow, ow, see? But the, <laughs> bot, the rest of it doesn't, see? So I buy these at thrift stores, put the toilet paper, and then put it out. Just put the lid on, see? Don't, don't touch the top edge, see? And, and you, that's all. That's all there is to it. Yeah. It's not how long it will last, just long enough to warm up. I've had this one for 10 years. <laughs> And it's working. Yeah. So you now these so, are some of the survival things that you teach. And uh, the kids learn things. Let's get back to where this language. Oh, yeah. Now, this is uh, the Cherokee syllabary by Sequoia. It was the first written. Yeah, here I am. Oh, this is me teaching the Army. Yeah, that's there I am teaching the Army. Okay. I taught two battalions. But I, I was fascinated. And this is the first written Native American alphabet by Sequoia. This is, uh, they named the great Sequoia trees after him. He was the only genius in the history of the world 
to write an alphabet for 17,000 Cherokee. And this was the written code of World War II. The Navajo, the Hopi, and other tribes was the spoken code because the Nazis and Japanese did not understand Neither See, did I. I said, hello, Cherokee Indian, how you doing, eh? But this story I need to hear from you. Why, why was it so essential that they drafted or begged or got so many Cherokee into the war? What was the reason? Well, well we're Americans. I know you were Americans, were, but... Were, were the... you born in America? Yes. Well, aren't you a Native American? Yes. You got the DNA, divine Native American blood, DNA, you see? But what the story I love so much, and we went online and checked this all out, uh -huh. because the U.S. code in World War II had been broken. That's right. They broke the code, and, and so the, the Indian... The Japanese and, yeah. and the Germans both. They broke the code, and without a code, you lose the war. It's like a general telling, I'm sending 10,000 troops over to your island on Tuesday morning, along with uh, 50 ships and 100 fighter planes. And the enemy's listening, and they're waiting for you. That's what happened with Kennedy with the Bay of Pigs invasion. It was stupid because Fidel Castro paid a quarter, bought a Miami Herald newspaper and said, oh, they're going to attack the Bay of Pigs. And they were waiting. No code. No code, you lose the war. Okay, but what's the code? What the was code the code? Was, uh, well, this was the written code, you see? Right, but I want to get to the no written code. You no know? written. Why were your people so important to the winning of World War II? Because, because the... Uh, the Navajo, uh, well, for example, there's a movie called Wind Talker with, um, um, oh, it, 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 uh, his name slips my mind. Um, anyway, Wind Talkers was a Hollywood movie showing the importance of the code. I, I know about it, and I just want to say, it. Yeah. Those people changed the whole course of history because they were able to communicate and nobody... In their own land, nobody knew. So there were Native men on all these different places who could communicate. They could communicate, and then there was, they would be able to tell where to put the firepower, where the enemy bunkers were. And uh, I, I, uh, I studied with an uh, um, Aztec medicine man and uh, he was a code talker, and he was, uh, he, he was, oh, they tortured thousands of Frenchmen trying to find him. They kept him hidden in haystacks, and they'd bring him food at night. And he would tell uh, the main command, Eisenhower in London, uh, where the Nazis were, and they would bring him information, and they would radio where, where it was. So... He was actually pivotal to the winning of the war. Yes. The code talkers, mm -hmm. and you knew him personally. You knew the man who had been in with Eisenhower, translating yes. to... Yes. Would you just tell me uh, briefly in your language what he might have said? I'm going to... Here's your microphone. Okay, well, he, he spoke... Uh, he spoke... He spoke... Uh, he spoke to, uh, well, he spoke English, but his code was uh, like, uh, in, like in Navajo. Right. A tank was a turtle. Uh, a, a, a fighter plane was a hummingbird. A two-engine bomber fighter plane was a duck. A large bomber was a goose. And, and so on. In the Navajo language, I don't speak Navajo. I speak a little bit of Cherokee. I speak more Spanish than I do Cherokee. So the words that he would use, only another nation, Indian would know because there's no written word. Nobody has a syllabus. Well, well, look at Osio. Osio, Osio is hello in Cherokee. 
The Englishman took it. Now watch, draw an O, O. Now inside the O, put a C. Inside the C, put a little O. You know what that is? That's the Englishman's copyright logo. They take everything, you see? And yeah. so, when my, so when Columbus came to this land, he was looking for India. So the first people he saw, he called them Indians. It's a good thing he wasn't looking for Turkey. <laughs> Yeah. You're so right. Yeah, you know? so Chief June Oleska met the boat, and they said, are you guys here for, the, for, the, for a weekend, or do you plan to spend the summer? Well, they stayed, and so we have to learn. We have to learn this land. So now the great turtle is talking to us. Yeah. And so that's why, uh, Oh, you know, man, is this a big book. It's leather. Uh, it's a beautifully bound book. It's, it's kind of old, but I teach the wild food, wild plant, what to eat, you know, and, uh, and how to cook it, how to prepare it. The oh. pine needles here, I came out of the desert, I came up here, and these pine trees, this beautiful state of Oregon, you can make a tea out of pine needles and drink it, and you've got vitamin C. All the animals create vitamin C naturally in their system, except for man. Man has to suck on a lemon or an orange or make pine needle tea. Pine it, it, needle tea. It keeps tea. you from scurvy. I've made a pine needle basket. But you did that? No, this is a gift oh, by my that's father. Beautiful. Yeah, when, I know a lady who could make these, yeah. When my father came to uh, court my mother he brought this basket so it's been very precious he it was from spokane where these pictures were taken by his father of first nation people or indians in mm -hmm. the spokane this is another treasure that someone made for him or he made for yeah. himself of robert martin initials right in it. Someone said, well, that's a swastika. And they said, no, you know long this before is? this. No, people don't understand. From the four corners, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, the corn giver came long ago and held out five years of corn. The Hopi stay in the center, and then 10 tribes went south, 10 tribes went east, 10 tribes went north, 10 tribes went west. You reverse it. All the Cherokee and Indian dances in the East are counterclockwise. There's, this is an old Indian weaving. There's a line in the middle, and all the Indian dances in the West are clockwise. These dances help to keep the Earth together. When you see two eagles, one's flying clockwise and one's flying counterclockwise, you see? They never knew that when they came over on the boat. And so this was the peace sign. But Hitler took the black eagle, he reversed it, and the snow eagle, everybody from the earth, the great snow eagle from the great turtle island, we, and, and so uh, they all went against the black eagle and wiped out the black eagle. And every time they try to hurt this nation, this great turtle island, it will come back on them. Well, uh, you know, I've learned so much. What is it? What is well, it? I don't let's know. let's take a look. Because long ago, let's say the earth was cleansed by water. Now, you don't have anything, and they say, well, what did you have? Well, we had cars, and we had TV. Well, make me a car. Well, I can't. So all you have is sticks and rocks and stones. So this is an old Cherokee drill. Now, usually I use a piece of hardwood. Now, I put a nail in here because the kids kept breaking it. But if I want to drill a hole, if I want to drill a hole, see? Oh, this I is can a drill power a drill. You're yeah, the it, power. It's, it's the same thing that you do today to drill a, to drill a hole to, or to drill a hole in turquoise or to grind valves. It's the same principle. And this is leather. Only what you do is you take, uh, you, you take some sand and you spit in it, poof, and you put this in the sand, and the sand acts as an abrasive, see? And so, it sharpens. You can drill, I can drill a hole through this tin, okay? 
it takes a while, but it teaches you patience. Eh? Oh, incredible. But that's all you got. We got patience. The blanket has been around as long as I've been around in my family. I understand it's a good blanket. Mm -hmm. And these pictures, these big pictures were taken by my grandfather in Spokane of those people. Mm -hmm. Now, you've brought so many things and time's running out. So how can people get these books oh, for kids? It's any bookstore, you just say, I want to get, I want to order Willie's book, Amazon.com. And uh, that's you can pretty get... high tech, Willie. I know. I don't have a computer. I don't want one. I, I got I go out and I, uh, I watch the deer and look how they talk to each other. You know, I want to say real quickly, because we're up here in the Lake of Fire. Uh, in case there's a volcanic eruption, put, get these goggles that you have compact, compact, protect your eyes and wear a cap. In case of volcano, I put a, I put a, a paint strainer inside my cap. You can put it over your face. Put your cap on and protect yourself against volcanic ash. Or you get these procedural masks. You wet it with water. When Mount St. Helena exploded, the, the dust is so fine. The people that had these little dust masks, they had a difficult time. These kind of little masks because the ash is ground glass and it gets around the nose and in the mouth. And so, or you can take a towel and wet it put it over the air cleaner of your car, and you can drive out of the area because we live in the lake of fire Okay, up here. and you have this all in a pack right here, a survival pack. It behooves all of us to be smart. Yeah. And you've heard yeah, it here I on Better Like TV. Um, we knew Mount Hel St. Helens, and, and some people didn't have a good That's understanding, right. a and they died. A lot of people died. Got to save a life. Save a life, and it'll work out really good. Well, I'm. It's really been great talking with you. I see we're running out of time, Bernice. Yes, indeed, we are. There's much to are. save a life, you know. I'm Bernie Martin Beck, and this is my <clears throat> doll made by. Uh, this is the softest deer. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a made with a little block of wood, and we're both saying we'll all say goodbye. Say goodbye, say goodbye. Take a little turtle. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey.